What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Malazan server. Once again we are over here at our home base in our story system while I was waiting for some things to actually go through. Um, I thought that we'd start off over here so I could show you the sort of changes that I've implemented in this area. Now one thing is uh, someone did mention that one of my videos when I showed off this area it looked a little bit dark. So what I've done is I've gone around all of the half slabs at the bottom and I've put a bunch of sea lanterns underneath that. So all the floor is nice and illuminated so hopefully you can see it. I've also sort of spreaded out the sea pickles across, along the corals so then that's a little bit more illuminated. I'm not too sure how that's going to show. Because you, whenever I render a video, uh, when I check it out afterwards and the lighting's all fine and I can see it all clearly, I sort of fail to double check it after it's uploaded. For some reason when you upload it onto YouTube, everything gets quite a bit darker, especially in shaded sort of areas. So I'm not too sure how well the coral reef around the outside is going to show. But yeah, uh, the other changes I've made over here before I get too much into that is the redstone lamps in the floor. I've actually connected up to our main switch for our storage system. So then when I switch that on, the storage system now goes into sorting mode. So you can hear that random clicking. That's our drop up in the top left. And then we can switch it off because we're not currently sorting. And that all closes up. All happy days there. Uh, I'm not too sure if I showed you down below. So if we hop on down here, take a little bit of damage. Um, I've moved our nether portal, done like a main entrance. And then I actually went ahead and done the wall around our storage system. So the design that I've gone for, I'm not sure if any of you would have watched my console edition Let's Play. And I've actually used a similar design then that I used in that one for a sand fortress build. So I've done the wall going all the way up to the top and then it comes a little bit out of the top. I've kept our bamboo farm up the top because that's supplying us with more than enough. And I've actually linked that bamboo farm directly into our storage system. It doesn't actually go through the sort or anything. It goes through to one of these manual chests on our right. And as you can see, we've got a full double chest there for any needs that we could possibly want bamboo for. So we've got that on the go in case we want more scaffolding. And I think that's all the changes that I've actually made in this area. I've not made any sort of adjustments or changes to the surface. But what has happened in between episodes is if any of you happen to have caught my arc let's play series on the console they didn't span for very long because as you if you've played arc on the console edition it doesn't really compare even remotely well to the pc version and there was a person on my arc series that has actually joined me on the server here now and that is steak and noodles so He's, I think he's currently AFK at the moment, but what he first done as soon as he got on the server is he went and found an outpost and he went and built, I think it was Silent Whispers design. Once again, Silent Whisper, yes, he's sort of like the go-to person when it, oh, well, as soon as I go through that portal, he's going to be angry at me now. That's a very, very bad mistake. So yeah, he's um, he went for Silent Whispers design. So I actually went over there after he initially built the farm. And we, well, him and me must have spent the better part. As, well, also with Mac, because Mac done quite a lot of sorting and helping out in the air as well. We must have spent the better part of a full day, a good 12 to 14 hours in one run on the Saturday just gone for me. And we actually done a complete renovation, done a lot of bug fixes. So I'm going to head over there and I'll show you the sort of stuff that he's got on going over there. All right then guys, so we're over here at Steak and Noodles Space. And as you can see, we've got a massive evoker holding up a big platform. So if you've seen Silent Whispers design, we have taken it sort of to the next level of uh, beefing it up a little bit. Now, there's a couple of issues that we're running into with Silent Whispers design. One is the spawning box he made. They were not just dropping down into the water. We triple and quadruple checked the spawning location. So what we ended up doing is instead of relying on them spawning at the northwest corner of the block and just dropping into a water stream, uh, we ended up just leaving that block completely clear, hooking it up to a tripwire with a sticky piston, which knocks them into the water stream. Then we had a little bit of an issue of them now and again getting caught on the elevator. So we ended up having an iron golem enticing them out into the elevator to get shot up. 
Then we ended up having the problem where the raid was kicking off at the top. When the raid does kick off, uh, now and again, when they spawn in groups or clusters, one of them would end up sort of knocking into the other and knocking them off at the edge. Now, if a pillager beast not gets knocked off the edge, oh, word, if the pillager beast gets knocked off the edge, it won't take full damage and die like standard mobs would. Now and again, the Evokers or the Vindicators may get knocked off and they'll take full damage and die. But the majority of the time, it used to be the Pillager Beast for some reason. And we'd end up rushing around, trying to find where it is, finding how comes the raids weren't continuing to go when he went AFK for like 20 minutes or half hour. So Steak and Noodles ended up putting in a massive lava trap. Initially, we did expand the top spawning platform where the actual raid kicks off and even that didn't fix it like we tore it all down we expanded it by another two blocks going each direction and then we've done the waterways as you can see a run of a raid is about to kick off now and uh if we actually get a aerial view we can sort of see them spawning there they all are now <laughs> with a horn going so then what he's done here is that if any of them do actually happen to get knocked off now he's actually put in a massive lava trap sitting on top of the auto sort in storage and with the auto sort in storage what happens here is if i give you a clear point of view we've got a basically an auto item dispenser or an auto dispenser there which the items will then get fed through and auto dispense into this water stream so some items should be coming through there they are we've got an emerald on its way round now and then that will do its way round in a water stream and we're using water streams to avoid any unnecessary lag on the server and then that then works its way round to the auto filters which are filtering out all the different item types so you've got a couple of well about six double chests worth of storage for emeralds and then i think we've got one for sticks because of witches one for arrows because you get absolutely tons of them and then you've got the other witch drops and then we've got oh, glass bottles you need to get an item frame for that one and then i think all of this is all of the armor and totems i'm dying but you know what while i'm here i'm going to take a couple more of them because I actually managed to lose all of my gear yesterday and I spent about three hours going around collecting all of the enchanted books and redoing all of my armor and it was a major hassle so what actually happened is that I fell in a well in the middle of a lava lake and the, when you die you do get some fire resistance but it only lasted for 40 seconds and I didn't have enough time to swim to the edge so now I've taken to carrying at least two of these on me at all times just in case that situation happens again and I have or I have I have actually used them quite a few times um, mainly due to fall damage more than anything else. A couple of times I got mobbed by zombie pigmen, but other than that, it's uh, mainly lava. So carrying these guys around, especially when I'm clearing out in a nether. But we did do a couple of like full scale statues of the evokers and then Steak added the um, new, what are they call campfires to give the particle, kept, like, the particle effects for the hands, which I think is a really nice touch. It's like a little bit of animation to a steel build, and it does really pull it together. Uh, and you've got the big platform there. I think he's putting in an auto smelter to get rid of a bunch of the armor down below. And then he's showing off for being on the server by getting so many emeralds, he's creating a box of emeralds around the actual spawning chamber where the banner guys spawn in. So this project was a total of around about 12 to 14 hours between me, him and Mac. And it was quite a fun one. I've not actually worked on a raid farm before. It's a good design by Silent Whisper. But there's uh, definitely a few little kinks that he's got to work out. Like uh, the whole spawning and meant to be just dropping into the water stream. That I watched his video for it after I saw that Stake had built it. Because he wanted me to come over and try it. I'll help sort of bug fix with it and after going through the steps that Silent Whisper done we found the exact spawning spot we made sure the orientation was right and yeah it just was it was not going the way that it was meant to go so a few little adjustments here and there and it is now working 100% fine and he's been stress testing it for the better part of around about four or five hours now 
Now, we only ever do AFK in on the server when there's no other people on. I thought I, thought I heard a creeper. When there's no other people on at the moment, it's only me and Sake because we're on UK time. And there's a, I think there's only three of us from the UK, which is me, Sake, and Mac, which is how it comes we tend to play together and do sort of joint co op projects because. Oh yeah, he's made a full beacon out of emeralds. Just, he's proper showing off on the server already. This is a stupidly overpowered farm for how much work it takes to put it in. Now, the farm itself would probably only take the better part of around about an hour, maybe two, to put in the way that Silent Whispers designed it. But we wanted to make it look a little bit more fancy, so we've got the auto sort in storage with the added sort of drop-off prevention. We've also got overflow percent like prevention. And we've got a couple of massive evoker statues. So it looks uh, proper mint. And the uh, Neverrack, please ignore that. I think he's using that to sort of build up the next platform for the auto snot he's putting in. But enough about this project and the catch up. I think today's project is definitely taking too long to get to as it is so my main problem at the moment on the server is whenever we come up to a sort of cosmetic build which this massively was um, as you can see the amount of concrete and wall that we've had to use uh, I was running around trying to scrape up any sort of dyes that I possibly could in order to get the stuff in order to make all of this so we ended up buying an absolute ton of concrete from the shopping area but for stained glass, like the white stained glass, obviously bones ain't too hard to come by. But then the yellow concrete, trying to get yellow dye, it's just to have some sort of source of dye just so that we've got it for our own personal use. I'm not looking to make a business out of it would be extremely handy. So I think that's what we're going to go off and work on. Now, I've actually managed to luckily find a, oh yeah, by the way, we've got up and down elevators in both of the evokers, which is a nice little handy way of getting up and down. Now, if the people on the server are watching this, I've blurred out the coordinates or put something over the coordinates just because I'm not going to show off the location of anyone's base in my videos unless they specifically give me permission or want me to. But yeah, I'm just going to give the cover up the coordinates for that anyway. So what i was saying yeah i found a flower forest so what i'm going to do is i'm going to head over there and we are actually going to get started on today's project after i've uh, talked for very very long so yeah i'll meet you over there all right then guys so we finally got over here it's only around about a good thousand or so blocks away from where our base is i think it's about a thousand odd blocks but as you can see we've got a massive assortment of different flowers in the area we've got ox size the azure bluets I think and then you've got lilacs, peonies, tulips, roses. I think the only thing that we've not got here is sunflowers that I can see but they I do believe spawn in their own specific biome. Now the placement of where these flowers are at the moment is not sort of an indicator as to what flower will specifically grow there. Um, is this blue dye? I do, but yes, it is blue dye. They're the new flowers, which are the corn flowers. Um, I've not seen any of the, I forgot what they're called. They're the new white ones. These guys. This is, yeah, Lil Lilia the Valley, and that gives us white dye. So that's white and blue, so then we don't have to waste our words, words, bones, or other words. Um, lapis, there we go. Oh, really should script out what I'm going to say before I start talking. So yeah, um, the placements of the flowers at the moment is not vindictive to what the actual placements are going to be when you use bone meal. And I honestly think that I may have forgotten my bone chest on my brush to get over here. So I think I should actually have some bones in this guy here. And that should actually be enough to sort of give us an indicator. So if we were to break this pink one here, and as you can see, we've now got a white tulip there. And what should happen is that when a flower spawns here, it should only ever really be a white tulip. Unless it's changed. Come on, give me another flower, please. Don't make me waste all of my bone meal. There we go. So then there's another white one. So now we've got two white tulips, which give light grey dye for 
reasons yeah so what i'm going to end up having to do is i'm going to clear little areas of this and just practice bone mill on certain areas until we get an area that's actually a i do believe a nine by nine so if we just uh, sort of clear a little area now so then i know the spread of the actual bone mill so then we know roughly how big we've got to work with if we do that and do some of this and like a salt like a salt and just break some of these thank you very much so we've got nothing in roughly about a nine by nine here i can't see it being bigger than that the spread of bone mill usually i would have said five by five but i think it's actually bigger than that now so if we do that we've got nothing more than about a five by five there and again and again okay it does not seem to be spreading now we've got another little bit over there a little bit over there and a little bit over there so by the looks of it i don't think it's going to be bigger than what is this so far five by five so one two three four five six i think it's seven by seven then isn't it yeah it looks about seven by seven is i think what we're going to go for and what i'm going to do is continuously to use bone meal until i get a decent spread of most of the flowers that i can find so yeah this is uh, going to be a little bit grindy for me to try find the right spot but yeah i'm going to crack on to it and then after i found a decent spot we get started on the farm all right then guys so it's been a good did i just hear us Kelly? it's been a good two three hours of uh, probably one of the most tedious things I've ever had to do in Minecraft and that is pretty much going around the area using some bone mill, seeing what grows where, breaking all of the grass and then constantly bone milling just outer and outer as you get further and further making sure that what I am seeing is correct and then I'll go around and double check so like there's an allium here and then I'd constantly grow that to make sure that that is another allium that's growing there which is um, where I've got up to. So I've done quite a large spread of an area. And the way that it's ended up laying out is pretty weird to be honest with you. So they seem to be growing in sort of patterns or bunches. Initially I thought it was completely random as to what grew where. But clearly there is some sort of generation to it. Now it's definitely not the generation that you see when they first naturally spawn when the world is generated. But as you can see we've got a whole little circle here of the lily of the valley. And then we've got a circle going around that of the cornflower. And then we've got a circle going around that of the oxide daisies. And then we've got the outer rim of tulips. And then you've got the azure bluets. And then the alliums. Then the poppies. And then the tulips sort of then branch off and then you get other little mini circles. So we've got a mini circle of poppies over there with alliums around them with the bluets or blue. I think it's bluets around them and then more tulips. And yeah, the pattern of them is really weird. So I've been looking around to see if there's any particular area where I can get a seven by seven chunk of all of them. But it's it's not gonna happen um <laughs> i was looking around for ages trying to see where they sort of intersect and if i could get a decent chunk so what i think i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna have probably two maybe three separate ones now our first one we definitely want to get the white and the blue dyes so we're definitely going to want the cornflower along with the lily of the valley so we're going to want a small chunk of this area here so let's say if this is our corner i'm sorry oxide but you're just not in this corner um i'm gonna do that so it's gonna be one two three four five six and a seven and then we can cut across so one two three four five six seven and then we can cut back across here and then this should give us a fairly half and half split between the blue and the white so that should be that sort of color scheme covered now hopefully this all goes to plan and hopefully after i adjust the sort of pistons because we're going to have a shift in floor design initially i was planning on having a minecart 
hopper a hopper minecart collection system underneath but the fact is, is when i come over here to get diet i'm not planning on afk in here for hours at a time i reckon that i'd maybe have to be here for around about 20 minutes maximum half an hour to get all the diet that i could possibly need for the time being so we're just going to set up shifting floor designs for each of these little quadrants that we're going to make and our next one we're gonna want mainly um light gray will definitely come in handy so that's going to be either oxide daisies or these azure blue it things and i think we've got a fairly decent little chunk here of the orange red uh the azure blue it's and then the alliums i'm not too fussed about because obviously we've got the two high flowers as well so we've got the roses we've got the peonies and i do believe we've got lilacs over here and setting up mini farms for them to be bone milled and you get double the amount of dye from them as well i do believe so oh wrong thing i wanted to eat fire an arrow so the allium things give the same dye i think it's magenta alliums give uh yeah it's going to be magenta because i think that's the only purple pinkish one and then i also do believe that is the same as peonies no peonies is pink and then if we go with lilacs we should have option for more magenta yeah so that's that one all covered so we don't really have to worry too much about the alliums so much um maybe a small quadrant say around don't be stealing my glass enderman glass grass <laughs> Oh my god. Ah, oh, great. Now I'm going to have an angry enderman on our case. Come on then. Ow. Come back. Give me my grass block. Thank you. Um, did he nick it from here? Or is it just another random one from somewhere? Just another random one. Okay, so back to what we we're doing. We want a chunk of the red, orange, and the light grey dye. So... Uh, that's just white, but I think the white tulips only give light grey as well, so that's not too much of a bother. So I say about here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we are actually going to get a couple of alliums in this little bunch as well, so a nice little mix of colours over this way. The main ones that I wanted were the blue and the white ones, the new ones, because you don't want to go using the lapis with the amount that we go through um, randomly enchanting books and then recycling books to re-enchant when we're mending our tools and whatnot. Uh, lapis is quite a hot commodity and it's not extremely common. It's You get a lot from each block that you find, but the blocks that you do find are not so common enough that they're just a junko block anymore especially when you can enchant as much as you can but i thought it was quite interesting that you get a see of the sort of generation as to where flowers would grow in a flower forest because there is a there is some sort of pattern to the madness here and it's definitely not where the flowers originally generate obviously when the flower forest generates with the world oh my god i said generate about four times in the same sentence so i'm sure that you're getting confused but what i'm going to do is sort of get this area set up for a shifting floor actually i think i may just do one of them on camera with you guys now because they are fairly simple and i should have all of the means on me to do so uh, and the day is actually going to be coming tonight soon so let's get a couple of you guys on our hotbar and then put you there so hopefully we've got the bits and pieces we've got no pistons in there we've got enough in here actually so need 14 for each one so it's what 28 pistons uh maybe a repeater you know we'll grab a couple of repeaters or we'll grab the blocks um we're gonna want observers and we're gonna want two dispensers and some hoppers uh maybe a chest and comparators all happy days there so dead center in the middle um we are gonna actually want to break this block because we're gonna need a dispenser facing up into here so if we just go and like us all 
and then we're going to want a line going out to the edge. Hopefully, I really am hoping that breaking these blocks isn't going to reset what grows here. But I'm sure that there's something that we're going to find out together. Because I need to run a line of hoppers to this so that we can refill it with bone meal as and when we need to. If we do that, and oh, come on, guy. I think there's a skeleton underground, that's what I'm hearing. I'm fairly sure that you guys won't be able to hear it on your end, but it's definitely what I can hear. So let's then get a chest so that we can refill with that. And then we're going to need a way of activating this. So um, building room, please. Thank you. And we're going to need a way of getting back out. Do that. So we want an observer facing up into a grass block. Um, wow, well, I'm so not prepared to do any of this, am I? Do that, and then we can break you. If we have, actually, we could probably use cobblestone and then just get some redstone dust. And then what we want to happen is each time the floor shifts, it will activate this observer, which will send a redstone signal which will then activate the dispenser to send bone mill into the block directly above it. So that is our system done there. Now, I can hear a phantom that's going to hit me. Yep. Oh, you dear. God, I hate these guys. They've been bothering me non-stop while I've been over here. And this area has become like mob central. I was the, it was only me and Saikon for a good about hour, hour and a half while I was over here. And because there's so few people on, the amount of mobs that were spawning over here was just ridiculous. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna hunt down these creepers quickly because I could actually use the gunpowder. So let's, uh, where'd the other one go? Come on, guy, say hello. I could hit him with my looting sword, but can't be our switch weapons. And uh, let's head on back over here. Now, what I did want to make sure is that the cornflower uh, is still growing on these blocks, the ones that are broke. So instead of doing that, let's just place a grass block. Oh my god! Uh, again, I just killed one of these guys. Why? Why was this mob voted in to be the one that came in? Why couldn't it have been the new one in the Never? But no, everyone had to vote for this stupid thing. And it's just more trolly than anything else. They're such a pain to kill. There. Okay. So bone mill. Over here, we just want to make sure that the cornflower is the one that's still going to grow here. If, oh my god, you've got to be kidding me. Come on. Tell me that's not trolly. Three of them in a row now. Okay, so we've got cornflowers growing up there. Um, I just want to make sure that it grows here. Just give me one. Just one. There we go. Okay. So, <laughs> excuse me. That is definitely the spot that is growing so now we just need to oh my god you gotta be connected okay look, i'm gonna make a cut until morning time because i'm gonna be fighting these guys off and on stuff otherwise all right then guys i think it's moderately safe now i've stopped being trolled by phantoms by the looks of it i'm fairly sure that a creeper is going to come up at any point and absolutely troll me as well that's usually the way it goes so what we want to do now that we've had a little reprieve we are actually going to want to get a better tool than just our fist with dirt on us, so um, shovel please. Okay, is this... Um, okay, I'm just, I'm just going to leave them. <laughs> Do whatever they're doing, I have no idea what he's on about. But I'm definitely sure that I'll actually want to go check it out. Uh, he's let me know it's daytime because I hid in a hole like a big chicken. And then we can carry on doing this, so... Um, I would hide the chat, but I have no idea. Oh, okay, I think he's found one of our gold farms. Yes, we do have more than one gold farm. <laughs> um, so, we want a couple of lines of distance before I say the word uh again. Well, not even a word, but just the sound. So, let me grab some pistons, and then we're going to want... Excuse me, excuse me. Line of pistons here, and then we're obviously going to want a block gap for them to be able to shift. We want to make it the whole thing, so do we just want to put these second line of pistons back here? Yeah, you know what? Why not? 
that will work as well. And like I saw. And I'm just going to do a very, very simple clock, which is a, excuse me, hopper pointing into another hopper. Excuse me, excuse me. And then a couple of comparators. Oh, wrong place. Over that. And one over here. And then we're going to want some redstone dust on us as well. Got some repeaters on the go. And then a little repeater, a little repeater, redstone dust, excuse me, flowers, and then redstone dust. Uh, hopefully that's not more than 15, and that should do the trick. It's a very, very simple clock that way. We're only going to throw one item into the actual hoppers, and then that one will go back and forth, and then signal either way, and it's just, it's probably as basic and simple as you can get. So let's give it a go, just to make sure that it does work. Oh yeah, that works a treat. Just grab these guys. Whoop, 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 whoop. And we're going to want a lever on this guy as well, so that we can turn it off. And do that. And put you on there. And as you can hear that clicking, that is our dispenser trying to dispense absolutely nothing because there's nothing in there at the moment so let's make some bone meal to throw in the chest or like a sort and let's see what our sort of return is or like a suit and or like a suit I can definitely hear a skelly underneath the ground somewhere. I may have to go find him soon enough. <laughs> Come on. Blue flowers, yeah. And the leader of the valleys, that's what we want to see. So then what I would usually do in this situation is I'd let it go until it runs out of bone meal. And then I'd turn it off, hop over, and grab the flowers. Whoa. So how many have we got on us? We've got 16 and 18 corn flowers. These are the only two from this section, so just see what else we can grab. Obviously, we're going to get immense amounts of seeds from this as well. But now we've got 38 and 35, so that's not too bad going. And uh, yeah, very, very simple, cheap and dirty to set up. But what I may actually do is knock this down the level, run these probably uh, round the back and then cover it up. Because I actually want this place to look fairly reasonable so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the other one as well very similar very same sort of redstone setup it's a uh, very very cheap and simple then I'm going to try use the resources that I got in the area to actually make the place look fairly decent so uh, I'm probably just going to make a massive jump cut to that I was thinking about doing a third person time lapse but it's going to be a little bit tedious I'm probably going to spend the better part of about another three or four hours around here just sort of tidying up and getting it to look fairly decent while I'm over here. So yeah, I guess I'll catch you back in a bit. All right then guys. So I spent uh, probably only around about half hour, maybe 45 minutes. Unfortunately, I've not got the resources on me or ready or at base to sort of do the decorating that I wanted to. And considering this is a place that we're not gonna be at too often or visiting too often, we're just gonna be coming here to top up our dye supplies every now and again. And that's as and when we use the dyes for doing different sort of cosmetic projects, which we are going to be doing quite a lot of in the future. But what I did go ahead and do is I done a ring around each of our separate farms with just some oak wood and then some birchwood slabs to hide up the redstone. And I got some sea lanterns for an extra bit of lighting. I torched up the area, I planted a bunch more trees. They're still all growing, so we've got a bunch of saplings ready to grow hopefully make the area look a little bit more nature-like and initially I was thinking about getting rid of all of the flowers but I quite like them actually as a clear indicator is this is the flower forest and there are a couple of people that will probably make use of the flower farm so I'll probably give them the coordinates for them to come and use at their leisure as long as they supply the bones and hopefully leave me some bones as well because I was hoping to be able to get enough dyes to fill our shulkers because I've got a few different colours that I wanted to collect mainly the blues and whites which is what I'm going to whack the rest of our bone mill into 
and we've only got five more, five, six more stacks of bones. Wow, my math's off there. It's not even maths, it's just looking. There's six there. It's just me not being able to count. Yeah, um, so the dyes, I've got a bunch of greys and whatnot. I've like, turned most of our flowers into dyes that we had in our double chest. And what I've gone ahead and done is I want to keep a stack of each of the flowers should we want to use them as decorations for any of our builds for put in like maybe the plant pots or just for general decoration in and about our area so always good to have on hand should we ever need them but what i'm going to do is i'm going to whack the rest of this bone mill or bones actually i may do four in one and then maybe two in the other just to top it up so yeah well, that's what i'll do i'm going to carry on doing that and um, yeah, I think that's unfortunately all that we've got time for today because I did waffle on quite a bit at the beginning of the episode showing you the new raid farm that Steak and Noodles built and that me, Mac and Steak managed to completely sort of overhaul, redecorate, bug fix and sort of help sort out um, along the way, which was uh, pretty fun actually. It was quite a fun project. Unfortunately, I didn't actually record any of that because it was just one of them sort of lazy days for me and well you didn't it wasn't even a planned project i went over to see what steak was getting on with and i saw that he'd built up a raid farm he then asked for a bit of help because he was running into a few issues with them spawning and then them falling off the platforms and then storage solutions so it was sort of one of them just tackling each thing as it came up sort of job and then after we finished off doing the adjustments on the farm we took a step back and looked at it and it's like what could we do to make it look better and then we sort of done an overhaul on the decorating on it and that took quite a while so but it was a fun thing to do in the meantime and hopefully you like the look of it and uh, yeah so that's going to be it for me today uh, it's not been too intensive redstone wise or even building wise but we did get a couple of little flower farms up and running and now we've got the means to be able to get the dye for moving forward and there are still a few more dyes that i need to get hold of so we still got black brown gray cyan and green i think are the only other dyes that we need to get hold of because the rest of them we can get from flowers so i think that's cactus cocoa beans and ink sacks that we're going to need to be able to get all of them done but i'm sure that we'll tackle them soon enough in the future but hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode and i'll hopefully catch you all in the next one Bye bye